to all my uh, friends here on the live stream um, and so and um, today we are in the midst of the Sakadava month which is also a, a very um, um, a special um, Buddhist um, it is called a very special um, Buddhist um, holy um, time but actually it's not just a Buddhist holy time actually it is a time to plant the seed of merit for all sentient beings in the three worlds of samsara so it is sort of like a merit planting holy a time where our virtues our merit increases by a hundred thousand times and that merit brings us then temporarily to birth in the higher realms and ultimately to the state of enlightenment so it's a, a, a celebration or a, a holy time where we are planting these seeds of merit and during this time <coughs> those seeds of merit are multiplied by um, hundreds and um, thousands of times and also it is, is it a month where three special holy days of the buddha come together but there is no need to go into that now and we are starting the nyungne retreat and the nyungne might be a practice that not everyone can do uh, we, there are many different vows and uh, practices that we do. We take those eight Mahayana Sojong vows 
and we also remain in silence and so forth. And so if one is not able to do an actual Nyungne practice, there's still a different way of practicing this. And that is by taking those, uh, just by taking those sojong vows. And this is a tradition that I myself have received when I came out of prison and visited uh, Lhasa in 1979 uh, after being released from prison. And I came to um, at Labrang, a temple where I met with a Gilukpa master called Ngavang um, Punsok, Gishe, Gishe Ngavang Punsok. And uh, this great master said to me that during these times of degeneration, the Mahayana Sojong vows are extremely important. And then with great kindness, he granted me these teachings. And he is a master that is accepted throughout all the four major lineages. He's really an, an undisputed uh, great master in the Mahasiddham. And even those who do not hold any religion, actually, uh, you know, back in, uh, in the old days, people would actually, also, even they would accept him. And they would say, uh, if uh, we would accept any monk at all, then it would be somebody like him. And so that's also why he was actually, he was first in prison, and that is why he was released from prison and was treated very, very well by the different officials and so on. And so he gave me this lineage of the Mahayana vows and the, the Nyungne and the Nyingne practice. And so it is a practice that can be done, and that's really important, it can be done by anyone at any time. And especially nowadays, people are very busy. We don't have so much time. So we can take uh, one or more of those vows, and then that marriage stays with us until we attain enlightenment. So you can take a vow for as long as you live, or you can take a vow for a year or for a month, or even just for a day, like <coughs> you're doing right now. And you can take the four root vows, or three, or two, or, or one vow. And then you can just continue to engage in your activities, in whatever work you're doing, holding that <coughs> vow, those vows. So it is very important to practice in this way, because nowadays um, there are so many distractions of worldly life that people just simply don't have much <coughs> time to engage in Dharma practice. And this is really a great method to increase our merit. And so this a blessed lineage of the Mahayana Sojong vows was the lineage I received from this great master, Gishik Ngavan Punsok, um, and also passed it, it on to Lama Punima, who is very interested in the Nyungne practice. And he's um, holding um, regular Nyungne practices, and every year, Starting with the first day of the Sakadava month, he's um, holding um, the, the vows and he's leading Nyungne practices uh, with great um, determination in, in the practice, great devotion to the practice. And uh, so he's upholding this tradition, he's upholding um, this, this, this lineage. And um, that is um, according to my wishes. And it is extremely beneficial. And because it's such a beneficial practice, I also wanted it's to pervade everywhere. And so it has been translated into three languages, Chinese, English, and Tibetan. And uh, it is my hope that it really reaches everywhere. And so the Nyungne practice is a very important practice. And especially now, this is a very important holy time. And it's very important during this time to engage in virtuous practice. And the taking of the Mahayana Sojong vows and practicing Nyungne or Nyingne are methods for creating a great deal of merit. Um, so uh, we, will, uh, we will begin <laughs> with the, the Nyungne practice. And I just wanted to introduce everyone who is following us from all over the world to the importance of this practice. Hatashi Delek to everyone. <laughs> Sunam 
这是我们的地方,杀鸡的路口,杀鸡的路口,杀鸡的路口,杀鸡的路口,杀鸡的路口,杀鸡的路口,杀鸡的路口,杀鸡的路口,杀鸡的路口,杀鸡的路口,杀
都是新疆老年都是等人在老年都是新疆老年都是新疆老年都是新疆老年都是新疆老年都是新疆老年都是新疆老年都是新疆老年都是新疆老年都是新疆老年都是新疆老年都是新疆老年都是新疆老年都是
All mother sentient beings, limitless as space, especially those enemies who hate me, obstructors who harm me, and those who create obstacles on my path to liberation and omniscience. May they experience happiness, be free from suffering, and swiftly may they attain precious, unsurpassed, perfectly complete enlightenment. All mother sentient beings, limitless as space, especially those enemies who hate me, obstructors who harm me, and those who create obstacles on my path to liberation and omniscience, may they experience happiness, be free from suffering, and swiftly may they attain precious, unsurpassed, perfectly complete enlightenment. For that purpose, until I attain Buddhahood, I will apply my body, speech, and mind to virtue. Until death, I will apply my body, speech, and mind to virtue. From today until this time tomorrow, I will apply my body, speech, and mind to virtue. I take refuge in the Buddhas until attaining the essence of awakening. Likewise, I take refuge in the Dharma and in the assembly of the Bodhisattvas. Just as the Buddhas of the past gave rise to Bodhicitta and progressed along the Bodhisattva's path, so shall I give rise to Bodhicitta for the benefit of all beings and practice the stages of the Bodhisattva's path. I take refuge in the Buddhas until attaining the essence of awakening. Likewise, I take refuge in the Dharma and in the assembly of the Bodhisattvas. Just as the Buddhas of the past gave rise to Bodhicitta and progressed along the Bodhisattva's path, so shall I give rise to Bodhicitta for the benefit of all beings and practice the stages of the Bodhisattva's path. <laughs> Until awakening, I take refuge in the Buddha, the Dharma, and the Supreme Assembly. By the merit of generosity and other perfections, may I attain Buddhahood for the benefit of all beings. Until awakening, I take refuge in the Buddha, the Dharma, and the Supreme Assembly. By the merit of generosity and other perfections, may I attain Buddhahood for the benefit of all beings. <laughs> May all mother sentient beings, limitless as space, have happiness and the causes of happiness. May they be free from suffering and the causes of suffering. May they not be separated from the happiness that is free from sorrow. May they rest in equanimity, free from attachment and aversion. May all mother sentient beings, limitless as space, have happiness and the causes of happiness. May they be free from suffering and the causes of suffering. May they not be separated from the happiness that is free from sorrow. May they rest in equanimity, free from attachment and aversion. We now move to the text called The Twelve Deeds of the Buddhas in Tibetan only. Mm-hmm. 
The main sadhana, a wish granting gem fulfilling every aspiration, page two. Kiteshvara, Gelongma Palmo, Yeshe Zangpo, Dawa Shonu, Penyapa, Jangsem Dagyal, Nipukpa, Kuton Dojekyal, Shangton Dajik, Kenpo Sidulwa, Dewa Chenpa, Skola Chuzangwa, Shea Pumpa, Gyal Serin Puche, Konchok Zangpo, Lamanga Wangwa, Jangjup Senge, Kenchen Yapupa, Sonam Da, Jampal Zangpo, Sangyen Yenpa, Mikyo Doje, Kunchuk Yenlak, Wangchuk Doje, Choki Wangchuk, Ngaki Wangchuk, Tulku Dubgyu, Tenpa Namgyal, Karma Chakme, Pema Kunga, Tinli Wangchuk, Sherap Drakpa, Tenzin Dondrup, Master Tenzin Trinli, Kamangedon, Tenpa Abge, and all the root and lineage gurus of great kindness, I supplicate you, please grant me your blessings. Now we go outside to drink the nectar, then we offer three prostrations. Mm-hmm. 
for the coming part where we'll take vows, we'll switch between the main sadhanas and paragraphs from the text called The Method for Observing the Eight Branch One Day Vows. surface of the earth become a pure land free from <coughs> stones and gravel even like a level palm and in nature smooth like lapis lazuli protector of all sentient beings without exception deity who destroys the endless hosts of Mara perfect knower of all things without exception victorious one and retinue please come to this place as I offer you these pleasant and white lotus flowers as big as billions of worlds with hundred petals and their pollen beds, please be seated and be comfortable. Whatever merit I have gathered through prostrations, offerings, confession, rejoicing, requesting and beseeching, I dedicate for the complete enlightenment of all beings. Please turn the will of the Dharma, of the greater and lesser vehicles, and the teachings common to both, according to the dispositions and mental capacities of sentient beings. Oh any teaching the Sanchok, the same Jay Simber, Gone in Yamsa Yamsa Langa, Nichu Domba, Sutramsa, Georgian. There in Papa Jinez, the Jiram Lion, Namjur Tang, there were Yamsa Langa. Sangha Save, Jude, Katop Tang, Domba, Yinla, the Lun Jerwa Yin. The young Hunje Jerwa Hunje Jasetang, Jepa Namjin, Zepet, Sir Kangimba. 
Dengi Ranju La Chiksa Chashin Tele Mandava Dom Sutram Sam Dombashi Chapa Yimbe Yataran Hunja Shipa La Sopa Rem Remjin Dundra Chungze Muna Deyang Zopa Sanje Namne Chuni Debjini Dangjisa Untumbara Shipa Na Debjin Shipa Dubje Jatang Charwana Jajomba Panto Jayun Tin Yang Taba Joshin Marek in Tok Tava Sangna Shibze Chutamje Lodu Jepana Yang Taba Jopa Sanje Bernan Kolo Jere Jerpo Tachan Shite Dane Dai Yola Sopan Jopana Kangna Upa Me Pana Njok Ranso Yava Tote Jerpo Teni Sunga Jinda Simchin Tamchi La Tarpadan Tamchin Jimba Lama Norwa Tunje Jindun Konan Lonze Pana Tach Anshitava Nankata Nyambe Simchin Tamchi Marchi Jindu Pindo Pana Tukje Chimbo Kurnamji Tukpa Chimbu Lanam Nami Petun Dumbana Langbo Chimbo Jandun Tarsim Bana Sava Seji Jindun Lolim Bana Sipa Sipa Nenyun De Dupa Pangbana Korpova Nyang Ilan Depa Kompangi Pana Ranga Tungji Sotopa Corvet Nele Matarva Sipa, Tangi Tang, New Mong Ballet, Matamche Sepana, Sipa Kundu Jerva, Yongso Seba, Tom Tapa, Gave Chutumbana, Yang Tapa, Ga, Sipin Chinwa, Tamche, Jepa, Jepana, Lepan Number Trove, Tok, Number Tamchen Chimbe, Yishinavana, Lepan Number Trove, Shirati, Edake, Sipana Gang. Kanga Jisa Lopan, Tejin Shipa Yung Tin Tin, Tejisa Jetta Lopa Kunong Sancho, the same Jetimba, Jetian Randung Yavar, Torvana, Simchin Tamje, the Tonja Santa, Nekap Nuntola, Gopanam, Pimbarsa, the Santa, Tatoki Nang, Gopana, Tovarsa, the Santa, Sinde Lande Jambana, Mogemi, Parsa, the Santa, Jedang Jumde Jambana, Nebi Parsave, Setan, Langsam Chukje Soji, Chunam Yongso, Zoparsave, Setan, Devil Lana Me Bayanta Bazopo Sanchok, Nipar Toposave, Setan, Yeketa, Oji Sanji Nimpe, Shane, Gavan Tada, Yanda Sovata, Dukpa Malu, Number John Wati, Gave to Setan, Dukpa Nam Jose, Tibjin Shepa, Sojon Kasada, She Sumbata, Sojon Gatumba, Cheta. Lunchin Suma Teta the Dark Yang Simchin Tamche Don't Pain Batan Korwa La Sob Gupate Dark Sir to Tatane Zong the Gipsy Sanyama Masha Jeb in La Jeb Domba Lang Manyampa Surgin the Suma Jeon Yamban de Jidunzo Page one in the text called The Method for Observing the Eight Branch One Day Vows. <coughs> Now listen with the motivation of bodhicitta set upon supreme awakening and think, having ta- taken the healing and purifying sojong vows of the great vehicle, I will keep them so that all sentient beings, limitless as space, may attain the state of perfect and complete Buddhahood. The observation of the eight temporary vows of the lesser vehicle, referred to as the eight branch one day niene vow, is observed by householders. When these vows are observed while imbued with the intent of bodhicitta, in accordance with the Mahayana, they become the discipline of refraining from misdeeds. In this practice, one combines the observance of the temporary vows with the generation stage practice of the deity yoga of noble Avalokiteshvara, and for this reason it becomes a yogic practice of the action tantra, kriya tantra, class of the secret mantra, and a branch of the secret mantra vows. Thus, when one commits to apply one's own mind stream in the manner of the Buddhas and Bodhisattvas of the past, and one does not transgress their ways, it is called the discipline of vowed restraints, or a vow. The following is a brief commentary on the meaningful parts of the text, one by one, beginning with just as the previous Tathagatas, Arhats, the perfectly complete Buddhas, etc. Since the perfectly complete Buddhas are those who have proceeded in accordance with the natural state just as it is, they are Tathagatas, thus gone ones. Because they have separated from the enemy, the four Maras, they are Arhats, four destroyers. 
and since they, since they have completely perfected the qualities of renunciation and realization, having awakened from the deep sleep of ignorance and having come to understand all knowable phenomena, they are perfectly complete Buddhas. For example, when the heavenly steed of a wheel-turning king enters into battle with the enemy, it does so intrepidly and without avail. It is willing to forsake its own life in order to protect the king. Likewise, because they show the unmistaken path to liberation and omniscience to all sentient beings, and because they are solely devoted to the purpose of others, the Tathagatas are like a heavenly steed. Furthermore, because it is with great compassion that they carry the burden of benefiting all sentient beings as limitless as space without being asked, and since they also demonstrate the unsurpassed meaning of the Mahayana, they are like a great elephant. Furthermore, having brought their task to completion, they did what needed to be done. Having actively sought the benefit of others, they have completed their tasks, abandoning the obscurations of karma and afflictions. They have laid down all their burdens, having achieved nirvana, the state beyond sorrow, and they reach their own goal. Due to eliminating all distorted views, which prevent escape from the samsaric state, and all the afflictive emotions, they have completely destroyed their bonds to existence. By demonstrating the Dharma that is virtuous in the beginning, middle and end, their speech is utterly perfect. Having severed all ties with samsaric existence, their minds are perfectly free. And because they possess the wisdom that knows everything, the wisdom is completely liberated. This describes the qualities that arise in whoever follows the example of the Tathagatas. Thereafter, since the Tathagatas have forsaken concern for themselves in order to show others how to train in the motivation of bodhicitta, it says that they act for the sake of all sentient beings. Because they temporarily establish beings in a higher birth, they benefit them. Because they ultimately establish beings in definite goodness, they liberate them. Because they have purified karmic results of stinginess, it says they eliminate famine, and because they have purified the karmic results of hatred, it says they act to heal beings from illness. Furthermore, the complete perfection of Dharma directed towards awakening accomplished by them is the path, and the definitely realized, unsurpassed, perfectly complete awakening accomplished by them is the result. <coughs> Regarding this practice, the second Buddha, Padmasambhava of Udhyana, has said, it fully restores so all virtue and purifies jong all negativity without exception. Since it restores virtue and completely purifies negativity, the Tathagata has called this the practice of so jong. Thus, it is said that one should think, "I shall take up and keep the so jong vows properly, and for the sake of all sentient beings, I shall benefit them and thereby liberate them, and so on." With this intention, I shall take up the eight branch vows and keep them properly and without corruption from this very moment until sunrise tomorrow. Keeping this in mind, one repeats accordingly. Now back to the main sadhana, page seven. So, you know, you will sanje down. Sanchok sampa tamche down. Sanchok sampa tamche down. From the end, then yami shake your boat down. Papa Chinese wants to dollar gong so sore. Papa Chinese wants to dollar gong so sore. Jetan Hunje, the Jinshipa. Jetan Gonki, the Shinshepa. Dratum by Yang Dakpa Zopa Sanje. Dratum by Yang Dakpa Zopa Sanje. Tatian Shi Tabu. Tatian Shi Tabu. Lambo Chimbo. Lampo Chimbo. Sava Sechin. Java Jeshin. Sepa Sepa. Chepa Chepa. Corpova. Corpova. Dagi Tonji So Topa. Daki Donche Su Topa. Sipa Kundo Jova Yong So Sepa. Sipa Kunto Jova Yong Su Sepa. Yang Dak Pika. Yang Dak Pika. Lepan Namba Tove Tok. Lepan Namba Tove Tok. Lepan Namba Tove Shirap Jin Te Namji. Lepan Namba Tove Shirap Jin Te Namji. Simjin Tamje Je Tonje Setang. Simjin Tamje Ki Donki Che Tang. Pimbar Save Setang. Pinta Jawa Chetang, 
Back to page 7. All Buddhas and Bodhisattvas dwelling in the ten directions. Blessed Lord, fearless King of the Shakyas, and noble Lord Avalokiteshvara, please heed me. Just as the previous Tathagatas, Arhats, and perfectly complete Buddhas, who, like the heavenly steed and the great elephant, did what had to be done, completed their task, laid down all their burdens, reached their own goal, and completely destroyed their bonds to existence, whose speech is utterly perfect, whose minds are perfectly free, and whose wisdom is completely liberated, who, for the sake of all sentient beings, in order to benefit them, liberate them, heal them from illness, and to eliminate famine, in order to fully perfect all dharma directed toward awakening, and to realize unsurpassed, perfectly complete awakening, most definitely took up the practice of sojourn. In the same way, I, who am called, from now on and until sunrise tomorrow, shall most definitely and perfectly take up the sojourn vows. Three times? Okay, back to page seven again. All Buddhas and Bodhisattvas dwelling in the ten directions, blessed Lord, peerless King of the Shakyas, and noble Lord Avalokiteshvara, please heed me. Just as the previous Tathagatas, Arhats, and perfectly complete Buddhas, who, like the heavenly steed and the great elephant, did what had to be done, completed their tasks, laid down all their burdens, reached their own goal, and completely destroyed their bonds to existence, whose speech is utterly perfect, whose minds are perfectly free, and whose wisdom is completely liberated who, for the sake of all sentient beings, in order to benefit them, liberate them, heal them from illness, and to eliminate famine, in order to fully perfect all dharma directed toward awakening, and to realize unsurpassed, perfectly complete awakening, most definitely took up the practice of sojourn. In the same way, I, who am called, from now on and until sunrise tomorrow, shall most definitely and perfectly take up the sojourn vows. เฮียนดุนเฉมีนลอเจ็บเบอร์ตองบาชีสาวาสุทุมเจพาร์เนตสุทุมเจยินลอเจ็บอายุเจยินลอเจ็บตุลยุเจยินลอสมนายุปาเ
Back to the text called the method for observing, we are in page 3. The words starting with just as the previous, etc., constitute the prayer of taking the eight temporary vows. These eight branches are then further divided into the four branches of discipline, the single branch of attentiveness, and the three branches of subduing discipline. The first branches are the four branches of discipline, which restrain one's own mind from unwholesome actions. Since these are the roots of all vows, they are known as the four roots. They are as follows. The first is to not kill any being. Besides not killing a human being, one should not even kill a louse or its eggs, which also belong to the realm of living beings. The second root is to not steal. Besides not stealing large possessions owned by others, one should not even steal a morsel of food. The third root is to abandon non-celibate conduct. Besides not pursuing the meeting of males and females for the enjoyment of sexual intercourse, one should not even look at one another with a lustful mind. The fourth root is to not speak lies. Besides not telling a great lie, such as falsely proclaiming oneself as having high human qualities or lying about having qualities on the boomies and paths that one does not have, one should not even fool others jokingly while playing around. The single branch of attentiveness is to abstain from alcohol. If one does not abandon this action, one's mind will become careless. When intoxicated by alcohol, one cannot be aware of every aspect of what to do and what not to do, and one also forgets about the vows one has taken. Due to this, one engages in non-virtuous actions and is therefore unable to keep any of one's vows. For this reason, one should abandon all intoxic intoxicating food and drink, such as alcohol made from fermented grains, such as wheat or barley, or alcohol made from honey, flowers, or any other fermented substance, as well as intoxicating fruit or roots. As for the three branches of subduing discipline, in order to refresh the recollection of one's vows, one subdues all of one's activities as a lay householder and follows after the excellent conduct of bodhisattvas. Thus, one engages in subduing. First one abandons dressing up and looking attractive, or applying sweet scents like camphor and sandalwood, which are applied with the intention to charm. Then one abandons adorning one's body with garlands of flowers, jewels, and so on. One abandons earrings, bracelets, and so on, which are the three kinds of adornment, which refers to abandoning the three kinds of entertainment, dancing, singing melodiously by elevating and lowering one's voice, and playing instruments such as string instruments or flutes. Second, one abandons eating at inappropriate times and does not consume from noon until sunrise the next day any food such as grains and fruit to quell one's hunger. One may, however, drink liquids such as water and tea to quell the pangs of thirst. Third, one abandons sitting on high and luxurious seats. This means not to sit upon any seat higher than one cubit or upon seats bedecked with silks and brocades or tiger and leopard skin, which are unsuitable for ordinary people. 
Thus, when the three kinds of entertainment, including dancing and the three kinds of adornment, such as garlands, are considered as one branch, these are the three branches of subduing discipline. Thus, thinking I shall keep these eight branches without corruption until sunrise tomorrow, one repeats the following. From this moment I will not kill, etc. Bottom of page 10. Jinje Back to bottom of page 10. From now on, I will not kill. I will not steal the belongings of others. I will not engage in sexual activities. I will not speak false words. I will totally abstain from alcohol, as it is a gateway for many mistakes. I will not sit on high and luxurious seats. I will not eat at inappropriate times. I will not use perfumes, jewelry, and ornaments. I will avoid entertainment, such as song and dance. Just as the Arhats refrained at all times from these actions, such as taking the lives of others, so shall I avoid these actions, such as taking the lives of others. May I swiftly attain unsurpassed awakening, and may sentient beings, brought with many sufferings, be freed from the ocean of cyclic existence. Back to page 10 again. From now on, I will not kill. I will not steal the belongings of others. I will not engage in sexual activities. I will not speak false words. I will totally abstain from alcohol, as it is a gateway for many mistakes. I will not sit on high and luxurious seats. I will not eat at inappropriate times. I will not use perfumes, jewelry, and ornaments. I will avoid entertainment such as song and dance. Just as the Arhats refrained at all times from these actions, such as taking the lives of others, so shall I avoid these actions, such as taking the lives of others. May I swiftly attain unsurpassed awakening, and may sentient beings, fraught with many sufferings, be freed from the ocean of cyclic existence. <laughs> Tongyu Bottom of page 4 in the second text. In order to develop such discipline to perfection, the Dharani of the essence of the six paramitas of the noble Amoga Pasha Sutra mentions the numerous benefits of this Dharani, such as by reciting this Dharani of pure discipline, the entire accumulation of ethical discipline of the Buddhas and Bodhisattvas of the three times will be brought to perfection within one's own mind stream and all faults of one's previous violations of discipline will be purified, and henceforth one's discipline will not decline. Thus repeat the Dharani. Om Amongashala. Page 13 in the Sadhana. Sambara Sambara. Sambara Sambara. Bara Bara Mahashuddha. Bara Bara Mahashuddha. Sato Pema Bebeketa. Sato Pema Bebeketa. Dunja Dara Dara. Dunja Dara Dara. Samita Avalokete. Samantha Avalokite. Hong Pei Sova. 
Om Petsvaha. Om Amogashila. Om Amogashila. Sambara Sambara. Sambara Sambara. Barabara Mahashuda. Barabara Mahashuda. Satopema Bapakata. Satopema Pipuketa. Buddha Dara Dara. Buddha Dara Dara. Samita Avalokete. Samita Avalokete. Om Petsvaha. Om Petsvaha. Om Amogashila. Om Amogashila. Sambara Sambara. Sambara Sambara. Barabara Mahashuda. Barabara Mahashuda. Satopema Babakada. Satopema Pipuketa. Buddha Dara Dara. Buddha Dara Dara. Samita Avalokete. Samita Avalokete. Om Petsvaha. Om Petsvaha. Offer three prostrations with the mantra. So the method for observing text, page number five, second paragraph. Furthermore, when the Bodhisattvas of the past performed enlightened actions out of love, having made fervent aspirations throughout the three periods of the day and the three periods of the night, they enjoyed ease on the path, the path was applied with ease, and they completed the accumulations of many eons. Thus, one repeats the aspiration that completely perfects the parameter of discipline, which has arisen out of an aspiration of love. Page 13 in the Sadhana. Through flawless discipline, in accordance with the rules of conduct, through perfectly pure discipline, and through discipline devoid of arrogance, may I carry the perfection of discipline to completion. Uh, the second 
Sumchatsaksam Asum Shepherd the other text, page 5, third paragraph. The glorious protector Arya Nagarjuna said, Grant the vows of Sojong to men and women alike, so that they may obtain the pleasing bodies of the gods who act as they wish. Thus, in the past, when Lord Buddha was alive, even those who kept the one-day Nine vows a single time, with merely a selfish mind, were reborn in the God realm of the 33. Since even those who have slightly transgressed the one-day vows will be reborn in the God abodes of the four great kings, it is said that the benefits of taking the vows are unfathomable. Moreover, it specifically states in the Moon Lamp Sutra that the merit of practicing a single precept for a single day and night during an era when the Holy Dharma is being destroyed and the teachings of the Sugata are coming to an end, is far greater to making offerings to millions of Buddhas for inconceivable eons. Thus, it is of greater benefit to keep a single vow for a single day during the final times of the present Buddha's teachings than it would have been to keep vows for a long time during former times when the teachings flourished. Furthermore, the benefits of taking vows with a mind of bodhicitta are immeasurable like space and will lead to the attainment of the state of complete Buddhahood. In particular, in the present context, by engaging in this practice in relation to a deity of the secret mantra Vajrayana and the profound yogas of the Mantrayana, one will join the ranks of the Vidyadharas in this very life. And however long it may take, it will not take more than 16 lifetimes to attain the supreme city of Mahamudra. Thus, rejoice. However, if you do not seal such virtues in the end with dedication, they can become exhausted through various conditions, such as anger. Therefore, please dedicate these roots of virtue toward great awakening by repeating the following and thereby adorn the conclusion with dedication. Yellow Prayer Book, page 13. By this merit, may I attain omniscience. Having defeated the enemies, my wrongdoings, May I liberate all beings who are tossed in the ocean of samsara by the waves of birth, old age, sickness, and death. Back to the sadhana. Page 14. 14. Page 14. Hmm? <laughs> Dana <laughs> 
Supreme Assembly, I take refuge until attaining enlightenment. By the merit of generosity and other good deeds, may I attain Buddhahood for the benefit of all beings. Om become void. From within the state of emptiness, upon a precious ground, appears a lovely boundless palace, completed with all the perfect attributes, within which I vividly appear as the great compassionate one. Arising from A, a moon disk at my heart is marked with the syllable Hri. From the Hri at my heart, light rays radiate and invite the glorious Guru, who is indivisible from the great compassionate one. Surrounded by the Buddhas and Bodhisattvas of the four families, he appears in the space in front of me, a 
and sits upon a moon disc resting on a thousand petaled lotus flower which sits upon a jeweled throne. Homage and praise to the gurus who embody all Buddhas, whose essence is the Vajra holder and who are the root of the three jewels. Homage and praise to the radiant Amitabha, the Dharmakaya of all the blissed gone ones of the three times, appearing as Avalokiteshvara, the eleven-faced one who gazes upon all beings of the six realms. Homage and praise to Avalokiteshvara, who with compassionate eyes watches over beings, who, untainted by faults, is white in color, and whose crown is adorned by the perfect Buddha. Homage and praise to the Sugatas of the five families who prevail over skillful means and supreme wisdom, and who, though inseparable from the space like Dharmakaya, emanate distinctly in raven-like forms. From the seed syllable at my heart emanate goddesses who offer flowers, incense, lamps, perfume, food, and the like. Heartfelt regret, I confess all transgressions of the three kinds of vows which I have committed while overpowered by ignorance. Whatever wrongs I have done at any time, I confess them with great fear. From now on, I will not allow them to happen again. I rejoice in all virtue, and I supplicate you to turn the wheel of Dharma. Holding in mind the awakened state of Buddhahood, I dedicate all virtues to supreme enlightenment. May all sentient beings be endowed with happiness. May they be free from all suffering. May they never be without happiness. May they abide in great equanimity. <laughs> Ah, 
phenomena that are subsumed under perceiver and perceived become empty. From within this state, the nature of my mind appears as a white tree upon a lotus and moon disk. From it, light streams forth and fulfills the purpose of sentient beings. The light then gathers back into the tree, which transforms into a golden lotus marked with a tree. From the tree, light emanates once again in the form of hooks and lassos that invite the Buddhas and Bodhisattvas of the Ten Directions. They dissolve into the lotus and tree and instantly transform into myself, appearing as the noble Avalokiteshvara. My body is youthful, white in color, with eleven faces. The main face is white, the right face is green, and the left face is red. Above them, the middle face is green, the right face is red, and the left face is white. Above them, the middle face is red, the right face is white, and the left face is green. These faces have a peaceful expression. Above all of them is a black, wrathful face with three eyes, bared fangs, and a menacing, frowning grimace. Above it is a red, peaceful face with a crown protrusion. Unadorned, it is visible from the neck up. Of my eight main hands, the first two on top are folded in prayer at my heart. Below it, the second right hand holds a crystal mala. 
the third is in the gesture of supreme generosity, and the fourth holds a wheel. The second left hand holds a lotus, the third holds an anointing vase, and the fourth holds a bow and arrow. My remaining 992 hands are in the gesture of supreme giving, and each of the 1,000 hands has an eye on its palm. I am adorned with ornaments of precious gems, and I am wearing an upper garment of an antelope skin draped over my left breast. My lower garment is made from Benares. My crown is adorned with a diadem of beautiful silks, and I emit rays of white light. At my heart, upon a moon disk, is the white letter Shri, whose light rays invite Avalokiteshvara and his retinue from the pure land of Potala. <laughs> Page 26. <coughs> Homage and praise to Avalokiteshvara, who with compassionate eyes watches over beings, who, untainted by faults, is white in color, and whose crown is adorned by the perfect Buddha. Ja, Hum, Bam, Ho, we merge inseparably, and my three places become marked with the syllables Om, Ah, Hum. Again, light radiates from the Shri at my heart, which causes the five Tathagatas to come here. From their hearts emanate the four mothers holding primordial wisdom nectar, which they use to bestow empowerment directly upon me. The nectar overflows and transforms into the essence of the Guru, appearing as Amitabha at my crown, Akshobhya at my forehead, Ratnasambhava behind my right ear, Amogasiddhi behind my left ear, 
and Virochana at the nape of my neck. Thus I am crowned by the lords of the five families. At my heart, upon a lotus and moon, is the essence of the wisdom being, the great compassionate one. He is the size of a thumb joint, and at his heart is the Samadhi being, appearing as a white letter she. From it, light issues forth and purifies the obscurations of all beings, and they all transform into the great compassionate one. The light then returns and dissolves back into the tree. Uh, so we don't have enough time to make um, a tea break, so if you need to use the restroom, you can just go over yourself. Namo Renagraya, Namaya Jana, Sango Jambero Jana, Naranjaya Tatangataya, Araho de Sumyo Sambuzai, Namasarvata Danga de Beo Debe, Sumyo Sambudabe, Namaya Valokite, Soraya Bodhisattva, Mahasadhuya Mahakarnikaya, Eya Thakum Dara Dara, Dridiri Durudur, Etevate Tale Tale, Patole Pratale Me Kusuma Mihele Mele Tittidol Ma Panaya Sova Namare Nataya Namaya Jana Tonga Rambero Jana Baharam Daya Tathanga Daya Arahati Sumyo Sambhu Daya Namma Sarva Tathanga Debe Ahadebe Sambhu Sambhu Debe Namma Yalukite Yoraya Ambuti Sadoya Masatuya Mahakurunikaya Eya Tha Um Dara Dara Dere Dere Duru Duru Do you know what this one's called?
Thank <laughs> you. 
जाए कहाँ तुझे गोजे देंगे रहने दे दावे ते हैं न तो बे महादाबे जे एवाज़ ले रहा वे तुझे जें बहुमा बाजा कंदो को बोलां जुझे जार जे साजा का ये जायो मारते हैं वो जाए मायूंगावा ऐते हैं वो मायेगा ये यूं जावा नाम से जाते ऐते हैं तो जाना बो ने जिन समझे ते चुने जे ऐ तेरा शिजा ने मार पोतो तो देंबाने देंबांगो जनाबा सा सोवियो सोदिया तंबाने तो कहता ने ने ते हैं दम तेंसुं बेचु जेंजे ये बेंगुलो जेंबा ते हैं युंजे ने बे बे मादा संबे जिलो ये बा ये हैं नज़ो युंसु जेंबा वो ऐला सानी गुज़ा तो हाँ गुज़ा सानी जो जेंजे ऐताहतुंधुसुनुजीहेदेदुचिंदेदेंबावो Yeah-oh-ta-ji-ju-be Yeah-oh-ze-gar-bu-hun-tru-ar-ju Do-shri-li-ya-pa Me-he-mar-pu-ten-ji-sa-ja-ji Shad-ho-ho-li-me-ju Pa-ha-ng-ho-ba-sa-no-sa-ja-ji Lord,我们的人就，那些不住的杀家境，那道我们的人呢，这些狗不杀，就就给他，三道阿里的东主，那些家可家境杀家境。Back to page 31. All phenomena become void. From within this state, from the tree at my heart, emanates the letter broom which travels to the space in front of me. The broom then melts and transforms into a palace of jewels, square with four doors. Inside is a jeweled throne and a moon disk, upon which is a multicolored eight-petaled lotus. At its center is a she, which transforms into the great compassionate one, crystal clear, resembling myself. His body is youthful, white in color, with eleven faces. The main face is white, the right face is green, and the left face is red. 
Above them, the middle face is green, the right face is red, and the left face is white. Above them, the middle face is red, the right face is white, and the left face is green. These faces have a peaceful expression. Above all of them is a black, wrathful face with three eyes, bared fangs, and a menacing, frowning grimace. Above it is a red, peaceful face with a crown protrusion. Unadorned, it is visible from the neck up. Of his eight main hands, the first two on top are folded in prayer at his heart. Below it, the second right hand holds crystal mala, and third is in the gesture of supreme generosity, and the fourth holds a wheel. The second left hand holds a lotus, the third holds an anointing vase, and the fourth holds a bow and arrow. His remaining 992 hands are in the gesture of supreme giving, and each of the 1,000 hands has an eye on its palm. He is adorned with ornaments of precious gems and wears an upper garment of an antelope skin draped over his left breast. The lower garment is made from Benares. The crown is adorned with a diadem of beautiful silks, and he emits rays of white light. Above, a she transforms into red Amitabha, his hands in the gesture of Samadhi. In the east, a whom transforms into a blue Akshobhya, his hands in the earth-touching gesture. In the south, a tram transforms into yellow Ratnasambhava, his hands in the gesture of supreme giving. In the west, an om transforms into white Vairochana in the aspect of supreme awakening. In the north, an A transforms into green Amogasiddhi with his hands in the gesture of granting protection. All of them are adorned with jewels, and the three places are marked with the three seed syllables. The light radiating from the three syllables invites the wisdom beings who dissolve into him. Thus, we have merged non-dually. Homage to the gurus who embody all Buddhas, whose essence is the Vajra holder and who are the root of the three jewels. Homage to the radiant Amitabha, the Dharmakaya of all the bliss gone ones of the three times, appearing as a Palokiteshvara, the eleven faced one who gazes upon all beings of the six realms. Homage to Avalokiteshvara, who, with compassionate eyes, watches over beings who, untainted by faults, is white in color, and whose crown is adorned by the perfect Buddha. Homage to the Sugatas of the five families, who prevail over skillful means and supreme wisdom, and who, though inseparable from the space like Dharmakaya, emanate distinctly in rainbow-like forms. From the seed syllable at my heart emanate goddesses who offer flowers, incense, lamps, perfumes, food, and the like. 
Holder and others, please heed me. With heartfelt regret, I confess all transgressions of the three kinds of vows which I have committed while overpowered by the three poisons. Whatever wrongs I have done at any time, I confess them with great fear. From now on, I will not allow them to happen again. I rejoice in all virtue, and I supplicate you to turn the wheel of Dharma. Holding in mind the awakened state of Buddhahood, I dedicate all virtues to supreme enlightenment. The ground is sprinkled with scented water and strewn with flowers. It is adorned with Mount Meru, the four continents, the sun and the moon. By visualizing it as a Buddha realm and offering it, may all beings enjoy the perfect purity of this realm. Having offered this excellent and pleasing mandala, may we experience no obstacles on the path to awakening. May we realize the enlightened mind of the Sugatas of the Three Times. May we neither strain to samsara nor rest in Nirvana's peace. May all beings, <coughs> limitless as the sky is vast, become liberated. Streams of primordial wisdom nectar descend from the fingers of myself and the great compassionate one in front, filling the vase completely. Namaya <laughs> 
Naraya buddhi sadhuya ma sadhuya ma karanikaya Jaya ta um dara dara Satoya, my 
into the main deity in front. <coughs> Above my crown is Gelongma Palmo, who supplicates the Noble One on my behalf. <laughs> Gelongma Palmo's praise to the Noble Lord Avalokiteshvara. Now you may offer prostrations. Oh, Oh, <laughs> Oh, <laughs> 
Young gathering vast merit, you reach the sublime. Lower realms, liberate us, O softly. Light, you dispel age and disease, you are supreme. Among beings, victor over Maras. Hose golden and clouds, jingling, beautify your feet. Your four boundless states, secure beings. In Peace dignified like elephant, graceful and swan. Doctrines keeper of all accumulations. Dance, savior from the oceans of milk and water. Men or women, lift your eyes each day. Don't devote your mind with respect to chandrasing. Praise him with this excellent view. Song recite clearly and purely then all of your Worldly and transcendent wishes will be fulfilled in this life and all of your future lives. <clears throat> oh, my prostrate to the protector of the universe, the guru of the universe, honored by beings of all three realms, praised by God's Mara Brahma, wish granting. King of sages, supreme protector, I prostrate, noble body containing all bliss gone. Once your crowns are done with the Buddha, boundless light, your generous right hand gives this to hungry. Ghost, your left hands are done with a gold lotus, your perfumed hair flushes with lightning bound. Like red gold garlands, oh, your face is beautiful, shining full moon and your lotus eyes are white, so exquisite, your sweet smelling body is white, as a snowy conch you hold you glittering, pearls you are draped in radiance like the red of dawn, your hands spread like perfect lotuses are Ranged on a steel lake, you think like the autumn clouds. Many jewels adorn your shoulders, your young palms are exquisite, soft and tender as new leaves. Your left dress is covered by a pillow. Hide beautified by fine earrings, bracelets, and clets. You abide on every stingy pillow. To send your belly smooth as a lotus petal, your sublime gold belly studded with fine gems from your hips, great garments of the finest silk, supreme wisdom of the Buddha gone be. Young gathering vast merit, you reach the sublime, lower realms liberate us source of the light, you dispel age and disease, you are supreme, among beings, victor over Maras, holds golden anchors, jingling, beautify your feet, your four boundless states, secure beings in Peace dignified like elephant, graceful as one, the queen's keeper of all accumulations. Dance, savior from the oceans of milk and water. Men or woman, if you rise each day, yet don't devote your mind with respect to Chen Rezig. And you praise him with this excellent view. Song recite clearly and purely the all of your Worldly and transcendent wishes will be fulfilled in this life and all of your future lives. <laughs> Forty nine bottom Please grant your blessings that the teachings and the holders of the teachings will remain for a long time and that myself and all sentient beings may train in bodhicitta. Grant your blessings that we may fully attain the union of shamatha and vipassana and we may perfectly realize omniscient wisdom. Oh. 
This stoma, endowed with perfect color, odor, taste, and potency, I offer to the noble Lord Avalokiteshvara, the Buddhas, and the Bodhisattvas. <laughs> future lives, may I be born in a good family, and may I be endowed with a clear intellect, free from pride, and may I have great compassion and devotion to the Guru. May my Samaya, Witch and Rezig remain firm. May Bodhicitta, the precious and supreme mind, arise in whom it has not yet arisen. Where it has arisen, may it not decline, but ever increase higher and higher. <laughs> By offering a bath with scented streams of nectar to the protector of Alokiteshvara, a lamp for wandering beings, May all defilements and the two kinds of obscurations of all beings be completely purified, and may there be the auspiciousness for all beings to achieve the stainless three kayas. <laughs> Exalted Lord, please heed me. I request you to forgive my lack of clarity in meditation, corrupted mantra recitations, and impure activities regarding cleanliness, all of which I have committed while controlled by lethargy and agitation. <laughs> Yeah, 
Sergio. In the space before me is the exalted noble one who was born from the six syllables. He bathes me with the nectar that flows from his fingers, which purifies the three obscurations. So now we'll go to the blue prayer book. Shanti Deva's dedication on page 61. <clears throat> by all the virtue I have now amassed, by composition of this book which speaks of entry to the Bodhisattva way, may every being tread the path to Buddhahood. May beings everywhere who suffer torment in their minds and bodies have, by virtue of my merit, joy and happiness in boundless measure. As long as they may linger in samsara, may their present joy know no decline, and may they taste the of unsurpassed beatitude in constant and unbroken continuity. Throughout the spheres and riches of the world, in hellish states, wherever they may be, may beings fettered there, tormented, taste the bliss and peace of Sukhavati. May those caught in the freezing eyes be warmed, and from the messing clouds of Bodhisattva's prayers, may torrents rain in boundless streams to cool those burning in infernal fires. May forests where the leaves are blades and swords become sweet groves and pleasant woodland glades. And may the trees of miracles appear, supplanting those upon the hill of Shalmali. And may the very pits of hell be sweet, with fragrant pools all perfumed with the scent of lotuses, be lovely with the cries of swan and goose, and waterfowl so pleasing to the ear. May fiery coals turn into heaps of jewels, the burning ground become a crystal floor, the crushing hills celestial abodes, adorned with offerings the dwelling place of Buddhas. May the hail of lava, fiery stones and weapons henceforth become a rain of blossoms, May those whose hell it is to fight and wound be turned to lovers offering their flowers, and those engulfed in fiery vitarani, their flesh destroyed, their bones bleached white as kunda flowers, may they, through all my merit strength, have godlike forms and sport with goddesses in Mandakini's peaceful streams. What fear is it, they'll ask, that grips the henchmen of the deadly lord, the frightful vultures and the carrion crows? That brings us joy and drives away our dreadful night. And looking skyward, they will see the shining form of Vajrapani. Quench in joy, and may they go to him. And when they see the seething lava flood of hell, extinguished in a rain of blossoms, drenched in scented water, at once fulfilled in bliss, they'll ask, how can this be? And thus the denizens of hell will see the one who holds the lotus. Friends, Throw away your fears and quickly gather here. For who is it who comes to banish dread, this youth with wound up gleaming hair, this loving bodhisattva saving and protecting every being, whose power relieves all pain, increasing joy? Do you see the splendor of his house that echoes praises of a thousand goddesses, the hundred gods who lay their diadems before his lotus feet, the rain of flowers falling on his head, his eyes moist with compassion? Thus may those in hell cry out on seeing Manju Gosha. And likewise, when through these my roots of virtue, they see the joyful clouds let fall their cooling scented drain, their obscurations cleansed by bodhisattvas like Samantabhadra, may all those languishing in hell come now to perfect happiness. And may the stooping animals be freed from fear of being preyed upon, and each and may the famished spirits have such joy as those who dwell within the northern continent. And may they be replete and satisfied by streams of milk that pour from noble lord Avalokita's hand. And bathing in it, may they be refreshed and cool. And may the blind receive their sight, and may the deaf begin to hear, and women near their time bring forth, like Maya Devi, free from any pain. <clears throat> and may the naked now be clothed, and all the hungry eat their fill, and may those parched with thirst receive few waters and delicious drink. May the poor and destitute find wealth, the haggard and the careworn joy. May confidence relieve those in despair and bring them steadfastness and every excellence. May every being ailing with disease be freed at once from every malady. 
May all the sickness that afflicts the living be instantly and permanently healed. May those who go in dread have no more fear. May captives be unchained and now set free. And may the weak receive their strength. May living beings help each other in kindness. May travelers upon the road find happiness no matter where they go. And may they gain without the need of toil the goals on which they set their hearts. May those who put to sea in boat or ship attain the ports that they desire. And may they safely come to shore and sweet reunion with their kith and kin. May those who lose their way in, strength, in misery find fellow travelers and safe from the threat of thieves and savage beasts be tireless and their journey light. May children and the old, the weak, protectorless, bewildered in the wild and pathless wastes, and those whose minds are dull and all who are insane have pure celestial beings as their guardians. May all attain the human state and be possessed of wisdom, faith, and love. With perfect livelihood and sustenance, may they have mindfulness throughout their lives. May everyone have unrestricted wealth, just like the treasury of space, enjoying it according to their wish, without a trace of harm or enmity. May beings destitute of splendor become magnificent and bright, and those worn down by toil and drudgery acquire great beauty and perfection. May all the women in this world attain the strength of masculinity, and may the lowly come to excellence, the proud and haughty lose their arrogance. And thus, by all the merit I have gained, may every being, leaving none aside, abandon all their evil ways, embracing goodness now and evermore. From bodhicitta, may they never separate and constantly engage in bodhisattva deeds. And may they be accepted as disciples by the Buddhas and turn aside from what is Mara's work. And may these beings, each and every one, enjoy an unsurpassed longevity, living always in contentment, May the very name of death be strange to them. On every side, in all the ten directions, may groves of wish-fulfilling trees abound, resounding with the sweetness of the teachings spoken by the Buddhas and their Bodhisattva children. And may the earth be wholesome everywhere, free from boulders, cliffs, and chasms, flat and even like a level palm, and smooth like lapis lazuli. And for many circles of disciples, may multitude of bodhisattvas rise in every land, adorning them with every excellence. From birdsong and the singing of the trees, from shafts of light and from the sky itself, may living beings, each and every one, perceive the constant sound of Dharma. May they come into the presence of the Buddhas and meet with bodhisattvas of, of the same, with clouds of offerings unbounded, May the teachers of the world be worshipped. May kindly spirits bring the rains on time, for harvest to be rich and plentiful. May princes rule according to the truth, and may the world be blessed with all prosperity. May medicines be strong and full of virtue. May healing spells be chanted with success. May spirits of the air that feed on flesh be kind, their minds imbued with pity. And let no being ever suffer pain. Let them neither ail nor languish, never doing evil. May they have no fear, nor suffer insults, and may their minds be ever free from sorrow. In monasteries, temples and the like, may reading and reciting widely flourish, may harmony prevail among the Sangha, and may its purpose be all fulfilled. May ordained monks intent upon the practice, find perfect places for retreat in solitude, abandon every vagrant thought, and meditate with trained and unserviceable minds. May nuns have all their wants supplied. May quarreling, vindictiveness be strange to them. Let all who have embraced monastic life uphold the pure and unimpaired observance. May they feel regret when discipline is broken, and always may they strive to cleanse away their fault. May they thus obtain a fortune ribbon, wherein to undertake unfailing discipline. May the wise and learned be revered and always be sustained by offerings. With minds suffused with purity, may their renown spread far and wide. May beings never languish in the lower realms. May pain and hardship be unknown to them. Enjoying more than godlike strength and beauty, may Buddhahood for them be swiftly gained. Again and yet again, may sentient beings make offerings to all the Buddhas, and with Buddha's unimagined bliss, May they enjoy undimmed and constant happiness. May all the bodhisattvas now fulfill their high intention for the sake of beings, 
and sentient beings likewise now receive the good the Buddhas have in store for them. And may the Arhats and Pratyeka Buddhas at length attain their perfect happiness. And may I also, through Manjushri's kindness, reach the ground of perfect joy. And throughout the stream of all my lives, embrace monastic ordination. Thus may I abide, sustained by simple, ordinary fare, and in every life obtain a dwelling place in perfect solitude. Whenever I desire to gaze on him, or put to him the slightest question, may I behold the unobstructed vision of Manju Gosha, my protector. To satisfy the needs of beings dwelling in the ten directions to the margins of the sky, may I reflect in every deed the perfect exploits of Manjushri. And now, as long as space endures, as long as there are beings to be found, may I continue likewise to remain, to drive away the souls of the world. The pains and sorrows of all wandering beings, may they ripen wholly on myself. And may the virtuous company of bodhisattvas bring about the happiness of beings. May the doctrine, only remedy for suffering, the source of every bliss and happiness, be nurtured and upheld with reverence, and throughout a vast continuous of time and you. And now to Manju Gosha I prostrate, whose kindness is the wellspring of my good intent, and to my virtuous friends I also bow, whose inspiration gave me strength to grow. <laughs> Now we're reading from the Noble Sutra of Recalling the Three Jewels, only in Tibetan. Zupa <laughs> Concerto Sipa Sandra Zambo, Mandrepa, Yonso, Zopa, Yonso, Yonso, Sama, Jumden, the Jay, Sumba, Chun, Yanta Ban Tonga, Nemepa, Tuchepa, Mepa, Never Tonga, Dan Tonga, La Tung, Kepa, Namja, Soso, Ranga, Repar, Jumden, the Jay, Sumba, Chun, Dorwa, La, Lipart, Nimpan Jonga, Sopa, Sanchoton, Rovars, Nintemba, Mitten, Dupatan, Tinopa, Jova, Chim. Oh, Nothing <laughs> Sanjay, 
So thank you for this session, and we'll see you back here at 1.30 Pacific time. Thank you so much.